Hello everyone, so today I am going to discuss the human person flourishing in terms of science and technology. So, let's start. Technology has always been defined as a means to an end in being a human activity. It has long filled the world. Every day, routineers are marked with technological advances that reflect what a society is good or known for. Technology has well advanced since the middle of the 20th century, especially after the World War II. It is not unexpected for technology to involve questions of knowledge which lead to its information as one of the branches of philosophy. This also led to the forbearance of technology based in how it is viewed and understood, but there is more to that. Aristotle was born 304 BC, an ancient Greek philosophy scientist, and one of the most significant thinkers and who contributed so much to technology, science, political theory, and aesthetics world. Followed that knowledge of the world begins by looking and examining that which exists. To understand a human person flourishing in terms of science and technology, it is good to first examine technology in its essence. Here are some views on technology. It has been said that there are many views or ways as to how technology is understood. These philosophies contributed on how technology is understood and utilized by the society. First is Aristotelianism. To Aristotle, technology is the organizing of techniques in order to meet the demand that is being posed by humans. This may seem that technology is primarily concerned with a product. Technology will be judged as either good or bad based on the value given to the product based on its use and effect to the society. Next is technological pessimism. This view is extremely supported by French philosopher Jack Elieu. It holds that technology is progressive and beneficial in many ways, but it is also doubtful in many ways. It is said that technology is a means to an end, but this view, technology has become a way of life. These are Jack's pessimistic arguments. First, technological progress has a price. Second, technological progress creates more problems. Third, technological progress creates damaging effects. And fourth, technological progress creates unpredictable, devastating effects. Although Jack has strongly spoken of his arguments, they are still found to be weak and not true all times. Like when he said that technological progress can create more problems than it solves. He seems to have underestimated the objective decisions as ignition and other technological agencies makes regarding the technology, the way, the good and the bad effects it can have in the society. So next is technological optimism. This view is strongly supported by technologists and engineers and also by ordinary people who believe that technology can alleviate all the difficulties and provide solutions for the problems that may come. It holds that even though technological problems may arise, technology will still be the solution to it. The extreme version of this philosophy is technocratism which holds technology as the supreme authority of everything. Next is existentialism. The main concern of this view is the existence or the mode of being of someone or something which is governed by the norm of authenticity. This view basically investigates the meaning of existence or being and is always faced with the selection must make with which the existent will commit himself to. So to Heidegger, the real essence of technology lies in inframing, the gathering of the setting upon which challenges man to bring unconcealed to unconcealment, and this is a continuous revealing. 
The next election will further discuss the view of Hedigar that technology is a way of revealing. Now we will talk about Martin Hedigar on science and technology. Martin Hedegaard, 1889-1996, a well-known German philosopher, examined the two usual definitions of technology. First, means to an end and a human activity, because he believed that this kind of confusing and there are questions to it that we easily overlook. These two definitions cannot be separated from each other. He called it the instrumental and anthropological definition of technology or simple means by which the human ends are realized. To Heidegger, this may not be a false definition, but it is misleading one because this limits our thinking. The instrumental definition of technology According to Heidegger, the instrumental definition of technology encourages us to view technology from different periods of time as not having fundamental differences. But he claimed that this does not show the true essence of technology. He explained that while technology is geared towards meeting a human need, still there is a difference between older handicraft technologies with modern technology. Heidegger also argued that technology is by no means technological and should not be seen as merely neutral. The problem begins when humans see it only as a means to an end and disregard the fact that there is a good technology and a bad technology. Heidegger further studied Aristotle's four causes and illustrated it using a silver chalice which he said owes its makeup from the four causes. First is causa materialis, or the material cost, the material by which the silver chalice was made of, silver. Second, causa formalis, or the formal cost, the form or the shape that gave the silver chalice its image. Next is causa finalis, or the final cost, the purpose or the primary use by which the silver chalice was made for to be used during the Holy Communion as a vessel for the wine that represents the blood of Christ. Lastly, the causa efficiens or the efficient cause, the agent that has caused for the silver chalice to come about, the silversmith. The four causes are all deemed responsible for the bringing forth of the silver chalice. This bringing forth of something is termed as poesis and this is characterized by an external force. It is bringing something concealed to unconcealment, which then makes technology is not only a means to an end, but also a mode of revealing. On the other hand, something that came about without any external force, like a flower blooming in the field or a tree bearing its fruit, is termed feces. The flower blossomed and the tree bore fruit without external help. Now, we will talk about Heidegger's technology as a way of revealing. Heidegger saw technology as a way of revealing and continues to demand for something to be brought out into the open. This bringing forth into the open is a two-way relationship. The concealed is calling out for someone to set upon it and bring it to unconcealment, and the one who receives the call sets upon the axe upon to unconceal the concealed. To further illustrate this, he gave some examples through contrasting ancient and modern technology. First, he talked about the ancient windmill, which only relies on the wind blowing and does not store energy, while the modern windmill unlocks the energy which can be for immediate use and can also be stored up for future use. Second was about the peasant planting seeds who only waits for the bringing forth of the planted seed because there is no challenge set upon the soil. Modern technology of cultivation, on the other hand, challenged the field that has caused for agriculture to be revolutionized. Now, food is not only produced for immediate use but can be stored as well for the future use and could cater more population. Third is about the wooden bridge that is built to join riverbanks for hundreds of years without challenge being set upon the river. While on the other hand, the hydroelectric plant that was set on Rhine River dammed the river into the hydroelectric plant so that electrical energy can be stored and distributed. Next, we will talk about the mode of revealing in modern technology. 
Hediger explained that technology as a mode of revealing does not stop and continues to be seen in modern technology, but not in the bringing forth sense. This is a non-stop revealing. Modern technology is revealed by challenging nature instead of bringing forth. It is setting upon challenges or demands on nature in order to first unlock and expose and sack piles for future use. Now we will talk about the essence of technology. According to Heidegger, the essence of technology is by no means anything technological. The continuous revealing takes place as man allows himself to be an agent in the setting up of challenges to nature, but Heidegger 1977 argues that this is not mere human doing. This gathering of the setting upon which challenges man to bring the unconcealed to unconcealment is called in framing with which, according to Heidegger, also shows the essence of modern technology. The danger of the non-stop revealing. As said earlier, the mode of revealing does not stop in modern technology. It continually calls man to respond to what is presented to him or to that demand of a better and efficient means to an end. With this comes the continuous challenging forth for the unconcealed to be unconcealed even more. Here lies the danger that Heidegger talked about. Lastly, we will talk about the society in the face of science and technology. When one looks around him now, he will see that man tends to find his happiness in the works of modern technology. Smartphones, tablets, laptops that come in different shapes and sizes with distinct features seem to be the measure of man's value. Social media has also affected the life of many. Face-to-face -face social interactions are being listened and people keep working hard to update their gadgets. There seems to be no contentment as every time a new product is released, man finds another need that can only be answered by a new product. One has to understand that technology does not only concern the means, but also the end. As one proverb goes, the end does not justify the means. For Heidegger, the solution for this is that man would not be controlling and manipulative of what he was set upon, but to also allow nature to reveal itself to him. That ends my presentation. Have a good day and God bless.